Hey gang, it's Will from Tested. And it's Norm from Tested. Norman Chan, you have three Android phones in front of you. That means, uh, let's see, one plus two equals three. That's right, uh, a, a buffet of phones, Ooh, as it were. Ooh, I like they're, buffets. They're also fancy. Um, yeah, today we're talking about the OnePlus 2. OnePlus is the name of the company, and uh, last year they actually released the OnePlus 1 phone, so this is the sequel, the OnePlus 2. And I really, really like the OnePlus 1. Uh, had extremely nice battery life, and it was offered at a great price if you could get an invite. Mm -hmm. uh, I was lucky enough to get an invite for the OnePlus 2, and so that's what we're reviewing today. So the OnePlus 1 was one of the first kind of flagship killer phones. It was a really low-end phone with high-end specs, a low-cost phone with high-end specs, and um, it was a big phone. Yeah, and that's a, a continuing trend. There are a lot of really good phones out there right now that you can get in the $200 and $300 price range off contract mm -hmm. via ASUS Zenfone 2, for example, if you can deal with the bloatware. Uh, the OnePlus, like their, their strategy, their business model is really interesting because they don't pack their phones with bloatware and they, want, they say they want to put the best hardware on their phones and really make money in the accessories market. Did they ship cyanogen on the first one, right? They did. Uh, this one actually does not have cyanogen. So let's go cover some of the basics okay. of this phone uh, to start. Uh, first of all, uh, it's actually, it feels like a really big phone. It is really big. It's bigger than the Samsung GS6. It's bigger than even the LG G4, which I thought was a pretty big phone. Mm -hmm. and it's taller than that, a little thicker, um, and it has that tapered bottom where it's flat on top but it's tapered in the bottom. It's very solid. A little, little bit, a gentle curve on the yeah. back. Gentle curve, and it, it it's hefty. It weighs a lot, actually. Wow. That. Yeah, compare Hold on. that to your... It weighs more than the Duke. Yeah. See? Yeah. I mean, oh, the Duke's oh, made yeah. of metal. Yes. This, That's a, this must be a lot of battery in that thing. Uh, well, there's a. we'll talk about battery in a second. Okay. Um, there's a higher capacity than last year. Um, in terms of the, the hardware, the things that matter, things that you're gonna notice, the display, of course. It's a 1080p mm -hmm. LCD. Uh, I really like this display. Great viewing angles, really uh, vibrant display. Um, and what it really just demonstrated to me is that you really don't need a 2560 by 1440 display. Now I know you guys out there won't be able to tell the difference between the display on here and maybe the display on here when you're watching a video on YouTube, mm -hmm. but the LG G4 has a 2560 by 1440 LCD and the Samsung GS6 also has a 2560 by 1440 uh, um, AMOLED screen. Uh, so, so do you find a difference in performance? Fewer pixels should mean that the phone, phone performs a little bit faster. So it should perform a little faster. The guts of this uh, are good enough that if, it feels like just as fast as the GS6. Okay. Um, it's a Qualcomm Snapdragon 810 processor, which actually is a eight core processor. There are four types of one type of arm, arm core and four of another different type of arm core. Um, are they all the same or is there like a low power mode? There's, there's a low power and high okay. power mode. So four of one and four of the other. Okay. Uh, and performance on your day-to-day -day stuff is just as fast as other flagship phones. Mm -hmm. uh, in benchmarks, it didn't top the GS6 or the LG G4, but it was up there with, you know, faster than the old OnePlus One and up there with like the Asus Zenfone 2. But, but like you said, in like your day-to-day -day use, you're, you're not going to notice the difference between this and the GS6 yeah. or the LG G4. Yeah, not going to notice that difference at all. And it has a, a strong Adreno processor inside there, so you get all your gaming as well. Okay. Um, and you don't need that, you know, that fast of a graphics processor because you're only driving a 1080p display also. Um, some interesting features, we did talk about uh, the OS. So last year you used Cyanogen, and mm -hmm. it was a big deal because this was like legitimizing Cyanogen, the clean fork of, of Google, of Google's Android. Android. Yeah. Um, uncluttered, fast updates, kind of community developed, and it was great. And you had themes and a great you know, notification drawer. No Cyanogen here because OnePlus actually had a falling out with Cyanogen last year. There were some rights issues about distribution. They couldn't put Cyanogen in India with their OnePlus phones because of hmm. an exclusivity, exclusivity contract. So with the OnePlus 2, there's actually it's running um, OnePlus's own Oxygen OS, their so, own version. So is this a stock version of Android? It is very, very close. Okay. It is Android 5.1, and the big test will be how fast Oxygen OS gets updated to uh, 6.0 mm -hmm. later this year. Year, uh, but the, the they've been developing for a while, and from what I can tell, it is very very similar to the stock Android experience. Uh, slight changes you're going to get uh, the notification drawer um, is going to be is it looks a little different. You can actually you know move some of these icons around. Hmm. You can actually click uh, where is it here? There you go. 
You can actually move your, uh, your icons and change the number of icons, stuff like that. Can you add more than those widgets or are those just the ones that are available? Those are the ones that are available. And then, if, of course, if you go into uh, the settings, settings as well, um, there, this, it's only one icon here. A lot, actually, a lot of good settings. You go to buttons, you can uh, turn on uh, the backlight for your capacitive button. So it is hardware buttons on the bottom. Okay. I like turning them off. You can swap them so you can be like Samsung and have your back button on the right as opposed to the left. Um, and each button actually has um, different actions, a long press and a double tap action, uh, which you can configure. Uh, in the menu here. And That's like nice. That. And does it, does it set reasonable defaults for those, or does it just leave those there for kind of grognards to figure out how to use it? It's reasonable. The defaults okay. are reasonable. Um, I've actually changed it so uh, my long press is Cortana. Ah. Well, hello, Cortana. Hi, Cortana. Oh. Well, there you go. So we'll we'll talk about that in a different video, I think. Yeah. Um, and it's been stable. And just in terms of updates, to uh, give it to you a sense of how, how uh, how fast we're getting updates. Mm -hmm. I've received three bug fix updates over the air for the OnePlus 2 already. That's since, uh, what, you had a month now? Since, since three weeks. Okay. Um, and uh, those are mostly small bug fixes, but there's supposed to be a big update in September. Okay. Uh, the Oxygen OS 2.1, that's supposed to actually fix a, a bunch of other stuff as well. Uh, one of the other things I noticed about this is it's a, it seems to be USB Type-C. Yeah, there are three uh, odd features, I would call them, on this phone. Because, you know, uh, they, they're calling this a 2000, 2016 flagship killer, which is, I think, an absurd piece of marketing because there are no 2016 phones out there. But what that does say is that OnePlus is trying to project what will be what their features are going to be in next year's phone. I mean, I, I guess one of the benefits of being essentially a niche for the high-end manufacturer is that you can make phones, you, you can make decisions that maybe wouldn't work on a more mainstream device. That's right. Um, so among those, the most notable is USB Type-C. Uh, I've noticed on the bottom that's different than the micro USB that you'd find yeah. on other phones. And for that, you need a USB Type C charging cable, which they include. And I do like that this cable, it's USB C on one side, you know, your standard USB on the other side, USB 2 cable, but this one is a universal cable as well. You can actually so, so plug that this in. And that doesn't look like a normal USB connector. You just jam it into the into the gap between the the, yep. the holder and the f f wall of the connector. Yeah, the wall ward. It includes yeah. the wall ward as well, and that just plugs in. Okay. Um, my problem is that with USB C, this phone isn't actually doesn't make it any physical advantage of that. Like for example, on this year's MacBook, 12 inch MacBook, mm -hmm. it has a USB C charging port because that enables it to be thinner. So it doesn't need that fat mag. Right. Right. On a smartphone, the real the, the micro USB is already really thin. The only real advantage of USB Type C is maybe looking forward in the future if you have USB well, three. You, you, the physical connector is and, more convenient. And the physical connector you can actually plug it in this way or spin it around. Yeah. That I mean that's the benefit of USB Type C is that it's a standard. It's unlike Lightning for yeah. for Apple, which is not a standard and is an expensive ass cable. This is theoretically a standard, and these cables will be very inexpensive within the next year or so. I have the new MacBook. Yeah which has USB-C, so I have a charger for that, and I, of course, have the charger here. Mm -hmm. That means I have two chargers, USB Type-C chargers. That gives me extreme charging anxiety when I carry this phone with you me. You only have two chargers. I only really? have two chargers if I don't buy more of them. I have, like, a hundred different US, micro-USB chargers laying around. Everyone has a micro-USB well, charger. You have a USB to, to USB-C cable here. Right. I, that's at home, when I charge it at home. Oh, you don't when carry I the travel, cable with you. Unless I buy another cable, it's, I, I have, working with this phone for the past couple of weeks, I've had more battery anxiety than any other phone I've used. Do you, how much are these cables? Can you get more of them? $10. Just done, done, no, no problem. It's, it's the scenario where if you're at a friend's place and maybe you just put your phone in your pocket, I'm yeah. not gonna put this in my pocket. I Sure, I'll have one in my bag. Keep it in your bag. But if I, go, if I don't have my bag, I'm just going to a friend's house, or you, I'm going to some place. You Everyone's need a gonna have either a USB, a micro USB cable, yeah. and everyone's going to have, most likely, you're, you're going to know someone with maybe a lightning cable at their house uh, to charge. Uh, when I was down there, uh, down in LA last week, for example, didn't bring the cable, and 
no one had a micro USB. And I'm, I'm at the airport. People can plug into the walls. and there's That no, Samsung charging yeah. station doesn't work for you, huh? It doesn't work for me. D uh, tell me, does it do any of the high-speed charging that comes with USB-C? It doesn't even do the high-speed charging. Oh, that's a bummer. Uh, so it doesn't even take any advantage of that. Um, so it's literally just they, they're using the physical connector it's as a way to say, hey, look, you can plug it in both ways. Just the form factor. Okay. Uh, charging with this actually took much longer than charging with my other phones. No fast charging enabled. Uh, there's actually a good test online that I tried to replicate uh, with the, these three phones. Uh, charging with the OnePlus 2, mm -hmm. two and a half hours for 100% charge, about two hours for the 80% mark. Uh, with the LG, hour and a half. With the Samsung GS6, which has the fast charger, mm -hmm. hour and like 10 minutes for 100% charge. Wow. And same, similar capacity batteries? A uh, little higher, different capacities all around, right. but use case all about a day. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's something I, I think it's odd. I, I mean, they want to really differentiate their phone, and I think it's an unnecessary hardware decision on their part. I mean, it's, it is future looking, but they're not taking advantage of the reasons that you would have that right. connector. Uh, um, another hardware feature they put in this phone that you actually don't see on a lot of phones these days is a physical switch um, for notifications. Well, that's very Apple. Uh, yes, it is actually. And this is actually a three-way switch. You have uh, one, and then two, and three, and I can actually mm. show you on the phone. Um, all notifications, priority, oh, there goes alarms only, or priority notifications. Hold on, so you can accidentally turn off alarms with the switch? No, it, alarms only is, oh, the, is, the, is, off. The, is the off. Okay. Yeah, alarms is the, the bare minimum one. Okay, so um, you have alarms, then you have priority, priority. and then, I assume that looks at your contact mm -hmm. list about people who you say are your yeah. favorite and people? And you can, you can add people and stuff like that. Okay. Um, and I think that's, that's a useful. That sounds that's, great. It's a nice little feature. Does um, that work across things like Hangouts and mail yeah. and everything? It's not totally. just text or whatever? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, on the side, of course, you have your power button, your, your thumb power button, as, uh, in addition to your, your volume buttons also. I think that's, that's a nice little feature, and it feels good. Um, the, the button feels good, and I actually use this quite a lot. You know, it's interesting, because I've been coming around on the iOS side to, to feel like the notification switch is maybe a little bit of an anachronism. Because when you're talking about having smartwatches that give you the ability to turn everything else off except mm -hmm. for silent and, and, and that stuff, yep. it's... I'd almost rather have it be a software switch at this point. Yeah, yeah, and Apple has given you the option, you know, at least on tablets, to switch that from a Not from anymore. the uh, the. So it's it's, it's only t s rotating. I think it's only no, no. Yeah, you can you can change it. Oh, you know what? The, I have the Air Two, which doesn't have the switch. Yes, that's right. So they took so, it off on yes. the new iPads. Yeah, but on, on some Apple products, yeah. you can switch between yeah, yeah. Uh, rotate screen lock or the notification. Yeah. Which switch. is great. That's a that's the way it should yes. be. Yes. Um, the third, can you configure that switch, or is it always notifications? It's always notifications. Okay. Um, the third feature on here is it has, does have a fingerprint sensor. Ooh. Uh, so I'll demonstrate that. Put the phone off right now. And if I have the phone on, it will require actually for me to unlock. Yep. So I either have the passcode or if I put my thumb here, hey, unlock. I have this finger. You can't just press that button to wake up the phone? There it goes. Finally. Okay. I've put five fingers on this. Yeah. Over time, it has gone noticeably worse. So this is the same problem that Apple had when they first rolled out the Except Touch ID sensor. Except this has only been three weeks. Oh wow! It took a long time on the yeah. 5s. It's lost like on the on the first day. I could you I could unlock it with like my finger this way or that way, on all like all yeah. five of the fingers. Now it's registering. It's failing more times than it is registering, mm. and that sucks. Um, that means that you're not going to use it. I'm not going to use it over time. Uh, in comparison to the Samsung, which I've had this phone for a long time, uh, this actually, back up, give my finger a little longer. Yeah, this is also. Did you change fingers? No. Do you have new fingers, Norm? There it goes. What yeah, have you been I'm doing with those fingers? Well. Um, and so I, I think it's imperfect, mm -hmm. notification, uh, the, the uh, finger unlock, fingerprint unlock. And the other thing I don't like is that it's not actually a button. Oh, that's just a capacitive it's touch. It's just a capacitive touch thing. On Samsung's, on the GS6, um, it's actually the home button is still a home button that you can press. So I, I like having that tactile having The click feels good. The click feels yeah. good, plus then you know it's actually registering. And like mm -hmm. when the phone's off and I want to unlock, you know, I want to press down and then register. Now I don't even know, you know does it even know to, to track my finger? You don't want ambiguity there. Oh, come on. Right. Like this is, this there is goes. bad. You saw, oh, there it yeah. goes. It's to contrast, yeah. on your phone. I, you can't do it with, with your finger, but there, it goes. there you go. Yeah, And that works every time now. Mm -hmm. Okay, 
I mean, um, it took him two years, just to right. be fair. Uh, cameras, there's a camera on the back and the camera in front, of course. Camera back is a 13 megapixel camera, F2 with optical stabilization. And I do like that even though it's OIS, it doesn't pop up from the back. Mm. Well, they, they have the bulge, so they can hide it in the yeah, bulge. They can hide that dual LED flash. Uh, the photos are... are Two-tone two two -tone LEDs? Yes, two-tone okay. LED flash. Photos are mediocre. Really? I don't think they're that great. No, no, I, I'll show you. I mean, um, it's difficult to, to show that this is not a, a picture I took with this camera. That was just to illustrate the screen. Uh, I think, you know, you get some depth of field. You can't save RAW as you could have with, um, with the, um, the OnePlus One. Huh. Um, Do you think that's a software thing with the new OS probably? No, you, you should is, be able to enable it. Okay. I mean, um, Android 5 has APIs right. if, you build the right, if you build into your software. Okay. Um, and the default camera app sucks. It, it's very, very basic. Uh, you, of course, can install a third-party camera app, but this is, this is just the basic one you get. You, know, you have your photo, video, uh, pano. pano, but not many settings It looks like all. you're having a hard time, like you're pulling down notifications a lot when yeah. you mean to be pulling down other stuff, too. Yeah. HDR, and that's it, a, huh. a beauty mode. Not what's, that, not what's, that what's, many features. What's the beauty mode, Norm? I think it just puts in a... a like it warms it up a little yeah, bit? Adjustment filters. Um, front camera is a little wide angle, which actually, I like that. Oh, well, that's nice. Take a, yeah. We should take a selfie. It's going to count down. There, there it goes. goes. I put a five-second timer on that. Um, it's like your own personal photo booth. Wow, we look really dumb. Look, five, five megapixel front camera. And the other thing I don't like about the camera is that it's actually really slow to activate. Mm. Uh, from the lock screen, you know, you, you're you're able to swipe from the bottom. Mm -hmm. That's I think that's actually too long for it to do that. Do it, do it again. Well, it's it's low. It's preloaded now. Right. Let's see. Okay. Well, nope. It does that also. Come on, from the side. Yeah. Wow. That, like, did you see that? Yeah. That's no good. That's that's slow. That's slow. Um, so actually pretty disappointed with the camera on this as well. Uh, you said there's an update coming to fix the camera as well? Yes, so that's, that's something that they know about. Uh, and hopefully in that September update with the Auction OS 2.1, we'll see a fix to that. It's weird because you don't generally expect to see a regression in features when you go from a first generation product to a second generation product. Yeah. So. I think part of it's also because they, they had to make their own OS. They couldn't rely on CyanogenGen. So right. There's a lot of development that goes goes into that. Right, I mean, that's a massive project. It's not, yeah. it's, it can't be understated how difficult it is to re-roll a new version of Android from scratch. Um, how's battery life? Battery life is very so-so. If you recall from our testing of the OnePlus One, I loved it. That one mm -hmm. was like the first phone I had that could go over a day and a half. That was, that was literally the phone that made me think, oh, maybe there's something to these big phones. Because if you have, in, like, if you never have to worry about battery life when you're even having a busy day, yes. I'm, I'm in on a big phone. And, right. and it's my favorite thing about the, the 6 Plus. Right. If you're going to have a 5.5 inch phone, yeah. you know, and a 1080p screen, and this one actually has a bigger, higher capacity 3,300 milliamp hour battery battery uh, bigger than last year, OnePlus One, it's actually worse battery life. How is that even possible? I don't know how it's possible. I get a uh, heavy use of nonstop checking stuff seven hours, which isn't a full day. So that's, that's say, turning your phone on every five minutes, like you every have some sort of horrible OCD? Facebook, Twitter, Netflix okay. video. Um, on a normal day, you do get 12 hours, so you can go from beginning. But 12 hours isn't enough. 12 hours, that's what you got. You got to plug it in. You got to buy one more of those USB Type-C oh, cables. now I understand why you have battery anxiety. It's not yeah. because the cord's annoying. It's because the battery doesn't last long right. enough. Using this normally just today mm -hmm. from an 8 o'clock morning, and it's 10.30 right now, I'm already at 83% battery. Oh, I'm at 84% right now. But I did, I, I rode in today, so I used yeah. my phone the entire commute. Um, other interesting things, uh, the back plate, I can actually remove it. And you'd think, oh, you're moving a back plate. That this means is exciting. You can swap out the battery, right? No, probably that, not. That makes sense. Wow, that sounds like it'll break eventually, the way that, that clicks. Well, you can buy new ones for $27 a piece. Do, can you get different patterns? You can get different patterns. You like can get wooden bamboo, stuff? bamboo patterns and all is sorts of stuff. real bamboo or fake bamboo? Uh, probably real bamboo, real okay. thin real bamboo. OK, that's um, kind of cool. No swappable battery, no micro SD card. Wait, what? Card. Really? There's nothing back there? But what you do get is dual nano SIMs. 
Oh, so if you have a work phone and a, and a personal phone, you can jam both yes. SIM cards in there and keep your... Does the OS keep your stuff separate or not you really? Yeah, you can like call from card one, call from card okay. two, use data from this, hotspot from this. That seems useful. That is. It's not so useful for me because I don't do that. It right. would have been useful a month ago when I went to Canada and I needed to get a Canadian SIM. Oh, yeah. Because then I could have... could have jammed your Canadian SIM in there. That's right. And had your boot phone and your, That's right. your American phone. A hybrid phone. Yeah. Um, it does support I mean, all you know all GSM bands, so many bands, right. and LTE. Uh, like yes. you can can you use this with Verizon and Sprint as well. You cannot use you know? it with Verizon okay. or Sprint. It's not CDMA. Um, so other things, no micro like no micro SD, no swappable battery, no fast charging, yeah, no that's... wireless charging, which uh, this Samsung does have. Do you, how important do you think the wireless charging is in 2015? I, I find it extremely convenient at home. You use it at home all the okay. time. The wireless charging is the equivalent, the convenience of wireless charging is the convenience of turning on your the light in your room with voice. You don't need to do it. It's not that difficult to go and hit a light switch, yeah. but being able to say, clap on, clap off, or just putting the phone on the side of the bed on the charger and not even thinking about it, and not like that, and yeah, in the morning, being able to pick up the phone without having to pull a cord, that is useful. The, the La the first thing you do in the or last thing you do at night, trying to jam the phone into the charger, mm -hmm. I can see that. Yes. Yeah. Um, no wireless charging and no NFC, which I think is probably the biggest wow, step really? of this phone. Um, Android, you know, Google Payments, we're going to get to see a lot of that next year. Are you using that stuff on your other phones? I am. Okay. I've tested it on the, the GS6. And also, because I'm testing a lot of phones, NFC is actually really useful just to transfer data from one phone to another. Mm. And I use that all the time when testing new so, phones. So the payment stuff, I found when I know that there's a retailer that accepts it and it's not going to be a pain in the ass, it requires mm -hmm. a conversation with the with yeah. the checkout person, I use it all the time. Mm -hmm. um, if it, if it's, there's any question at all, I just use a regular credit right. card. Right. I mean, it's just like credit cards having the chip transitioning yeah. over to that. Yeah. It'll be a slow transition, but not having that. If this is a 2016 flagship killer, that's also betting, one plus betting that NFC won't be a big thing in 2016, which... I think that's I, a bad bet. I think that's a bad bet yeah. also. Um, the big thing, of course, of this phone is that it is a relatively low-cost phone. Mm -hmm. It is currently still invite-only, so you can't buy, and they are disseminating invites, I think, at a faster rate than last year. Um, I assume they're doing that to, because they have supply, yeah, supply constraints. Yeah, exactly. Right. Okay. Um, and because they're not like, make, making a ton of money on these phones anyway. Um, it's $330 for the 16 gigabyte option, which has three gigs of RAM. And does it have a, there's no micro SD card slot? No micro SD card okay. slot. And I actually have the 64 gigabyte version, which is $390. Still uh, a good deal. That's still a great deal yeah. for off-contract price. And that one has actually four gigs of RAM as well. So it's slightly better performance. How, do they do this just by not, you know, Samsung sp spends billions of dollars on marketing every year. LG spends a ton of money on marketing. Mm -hmm. Is the way that they're selling these phones so cheaply just not spending money on TV ads and Super Bowl Zero commercials and marketing, stuff like that? And maybe that, our, or that scarcity could be artificial just to drum up as part of marketing. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Get people excited about the thing that's hard to get and exactly. then sell it to them inexpensively. Yep. Um, would you, it sounds like you wouldn't recommend this phone. I actually would not recommend this phone in this climate right now. Uh, last year, the OnePlus One with that excellent battery life, um, great price if you could get it, uh, was great. This year, there are other options. You know, you could buy the Asus Phone Zen Phone 2, the new, the new Motorola, mm -hmm. the new Moto X. Uh, there are some cheap, good, great phone options that have you know, a 1080p screen and some of the features that this phone doesn't even have. And better battery life, mm -hmm. presumably, as yeah. well. Yeah, If you're, like, when I said about the Asus Zenfone 2, is that that's a great phone if you break your phone and don't want to pay and you're out of warranty, you don't want to pay $500 for a new phone, mm -hmm. spend $200, get that phone, clean it up, and you have a great Android phone, uh, you would never, I would never do that with this phone. This is a kind of buy as your primary flagship carry. This is the one that you smash and then need to yes. replace later. Yeah, but as the one, as your primary carry phone, as the one that you're going to buy for the next two years, I don't think it's forward-looking enough. Has, has OnePlus said anything about addressing battery life? Is that something they think they're going to be able to fix by making their they OS better? or as well. Okay. I mean, they did say that they, fast charging was one of those things that they just couldn't put in this phone. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I guess if you're making a phone that's relatively inexpensive, you have to cut corners someplace, or you have to load, load a bunch of crap on there so that you can make a little bit of money after the sale. But And it just feels, it, it, it feels like they cu didn't necessarily cut corners uh, because they had to, but they cut corners so they could spend money on developing things that maybe we didn't need, like a USB phone. They, they cut the phone. wrong corners. Cut the wrong corners. There you well, go. The OnePlus 3 will be next year, we hope. So uh, yeah. 
Uh, I guess that'll do it for us today then. Yep, that's it for the one plus two. I'm gonna be taking my SIM card out of this and putting it back in probably the GS6. Okay. As my phone for this year. We'll see you guys next time. See ya. Bye.